Thank you. I'd like to start off with a short story. About 10 years ago, I had the pleasure of going up to uh, Columbia University for their Future of Learning Forum, and they had a number of guest speakers, and the keynoter was Richard Saul Werman, the founder of TED. Holy smokes, what a deal. Uh, this was great. He gave us a background on, um, on how it started, how it evolved, where it was going, uh, and at the end of his talk, we had about 80 people in the audience, he, uh, he asked us, what's the biggest issue in business today? And uh, so we all had to deliberate and and report out. So when it got around to our table, I raised my hand. I said, big data, that's the answer. That was the big thing at the time uh, in the literature. And he sat there and he kind of stepped back, took a break and he said, it's not about big data. It's about big understanding. And I said, wow, that hit me hard, right? That was profound in my mind and inspirational, right? Concepts are the foundations of understanding. When we're ch uh, children, um, we immediately start to say, concept of mommy, concept of daddy, brother, sister, dog, cat, you name it. And as we get to be a toddler, it's all, what is this? What is that, right? And it's all about understanding these concepts, what they are, how they interrelate. Um, it's, 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 it's fascinating. Um, neuroscientists tell us that our brains are plastic meaning they change throughout our entire lifetimes. Um, they tell us that we're blessed with 86 billion neurons, as many neurons as there are, in the, as there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy, just to put it in perspective. Um, we have the potential for 100 trillion connections, synaptic connections in our brains. Hard to even fathom that number. And most recently, they suggest that we have, uh, that the brain evolves uh, in 11 different dimensions. So let's just think about what's on our shoulders right now. Holy smokes, right? Uh, a big deal. And, and throughout our lives, um, we constantly translate data and information into knowledge, and it accumulates, and it becomes our big understanding, or wisdom, right? Hopefully wisdom. Uh, the famous Greek philosopher Aristotle coined the term phronesis, meaning altruistic and practical wisdom, and he held that as the highest of human virtue. So just to kind of put all this in perspective. I'm going to talk about conceptual thinking, what it is, how it happens, and, and why it's important. But I'd also ask you at this stage to think about how you think conceptually, how you quantify something, characterize something, connect the dots, and build your worldview. Conceptual thinking is the identification, labeling, characterization, classification, and connecting of different ideas and concepts, all as one big system of, of thought in our, in, our, in our worldview. Conceptual thinking helps us to organize and structure our thinking in ways that makes the world easier to understand at any level that we decide to look at it. Concepts can be, uh, they can be uh, abstract or concrete, they can be imaginative or real. Concepts are like Lego blocks of knowledge that we cobble together into various frameworks and arrangements um, that uh, help us to understand the world. There are a number of tools that are available that we can use, but they all kind of focus on the idea of um, nodes and links and combinations of nodes and links and labels that associate that. Researchers um, use what they call conceptual frames to organize and structure all the research literature that they pull together so they can understand um, what, where things stand and then what their research question is going to be or what their hypotheses are going to be. And then they go and do their research and they go and compare the results to the frame that they originally had and then they update it, just to give you a, a good idea. Analysts use what they call cognitive maps or knowledge structures. Um, Social scientists use social network analysis and what they call sociograms to take a look at the interaction between many, many different people. Um, process improvement specialists use value stream maps um, and, and swim lane diagrams. Uh, so we have all these tools available, but just the idea of thinking about clarifying things and connecting things is really the key. Today we're generally overwhelmed with information. It's hitting us from all sides and it can cause a lot of anxiety and frustration. Um, 
the internet is a blessing, tremendous opportunities, but it also has some challenges and is changing the world as, as, as we know it. Um, we're going from, uh, well, let me just, just the uh, knowledge is doubling, they estimate, every 12 hours to 12 months around the world. So just think about that, right? Now, how are we going to navigate that going forward? We've gone through the industrial age. We've gone through the information age. Uh, we're now kind of in this uh, knowledge age, which is all about kind of knowing databases and search. But now we're getting into the cognitive age, which is all about learning and thinking. It's all about how we learn, how we decide, how we plan, uh, the higher order kind of things. But we also have to consider how we're co-evolving with computers, right? Computers are learning from us, and we're learning from computers. And it's recursive. It's going back and forth like crazy. Uh, pretty unbelievable. Um, concepts are all around us. They're, they're everywhere. And our curiosities naturally put them together, kind of like puzzle pieces, um, so that we can understand the, the world better. Conceptual thinking helps us to um, identify gaps in our knowledge and helps us to formulate the best possible questions we can come up with um, to, to build our knowledge. And, and leading with questions is one of the big things leaders have to get a handle on as they start to build coalitions for change uh, going forward. Um, we can decompose concepts. We can aggregate concepts. We can zoom in. We can zoom out. Um, take, for example, I'll say sizing up a book. You grab a new book you have never seen before off the shelf. You look at the cover, you look at the back, you look at the table of contents, the, the figures. You're sizing it up, right? You're taking something brand new. You're trying to figure out what is this concept of this book and, and understand that. And you can decide, you know, I'm going to deep dive further on it or I'm going to, hey, I got it, I'm good, um, just to give you some idea. So concepts, when you start to combine them together, form mental models, okay? For example, the concept of a tire would roll up to an automobile or a plane or a tractor, whatever it might be. Mental models, which cover everything, come together into be our integrated worldview, our synthesized perspective of the world. Um, and so this all, this all helps us to understand what's going on in this complex world. It's all about making it, uh, to simplify the world, in terms that we can understand at various levels of, of consideration. Conceptual thinking helps us to make sense, give meaning, and challenge the validity of data that, that we're receiving. Um, it supports critical thinking. So it, it supports our ability to challenge assumptions, look at things at different levels of perspective. It helps us to form and challenge our beliefs and change our beliefs should we get new information. It helps us to identify our biases and our emotions um, and hopefully set them aside. That's a process researchers use called epiche, suspension of judgment rather than prejudging. Uh, so that's, that's very powerful. As we put concepts together in uh, ever more complex ways, we unleash our imagination and our creativity, which you know, can give us uh, uh, great new ideas, new innovations, new thoughts, new concepts, new ways of thinking. So when you think about the 11 dimensions all working, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty profound when, when you think about it. Um, conceptual thinking will help us to uh, think things through. They'll help us to think ahead and understand the future. They support strategic thinking, which is looking at the big picture and trying to link it to the details. It supports uh, linking the past to the present and using foresight, the concept of foresight, to look at the future in terms of what's possible, what's plausible, what's probable, uh, so that we can build plans and strategies uh, to move forward and, and smartly. Conceptual thinking can help us to solve problems. Um, it can help us to better understand root cause problems versus the symptoms, and can help us to conceptualize solutions. Just to give a starting place, the UN has uh, come up with 17 sustainability development goals that are universally applicable, uh, that need a lot of work. Um, and we can use conceptual thinking to help us along those lines. Mastering the art, science, 
and power of, of conceptual thinking can help us to adapt. In The Origin of the Species, um, Charles Darwin laid out the uh, survival of the species is dependent on our ability to adapt. And in today's world, things are getting very complex, almost chaotic, right, in, in many different ways. And, uh, and we have to be able to think, um, I'll say ride the waves uh, on top instead of being drowned, drowned in them. Um, the external environment is, is highly dynamic. I was at a workshop out at the Navy Postgraduate School looking at the future called the Design for Maritime Singularity. And we coined a, a term that we called eVUCA, which was exponentially accelerating technologies, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Holy smokes, right? How are we going to navigate that space? That was the real thing, right? So man-machine teaming was one of, the, one of the things we looked at. But to add to that, these technologies are, in fact, exponentially accelerating. And the theorists and scientists have come up with this idea, and you may have heard it, called the singularity, where all these technologies are combining together and synergizing, and things are just changing asymptotically. And they predict somewhere around 2045 that we simply don't know what's on the other side of this, because things are changing so fast. Um, we have to be able to think and, and be in sync with these environments. Conceptual thinking is uh, boundless in its uh, potential applications to allow us to think through, to think ahead, to position ourselves to be innovative and creative and ride the waves going forward so that we can adapt and also thrive with all the tremendous opportunities that are in front of us. Thank you. <laughs>